What up, what up, what up, homies? Got a little package from Six Cents. So I'm going to give everybody a couple of minutes to hop on here. I did not warn anybody, give any heads ups um, that I would be live streaming tonight. So just going to give people a couple minutes to get those notifications, hop in here, and, um, and then I will open this package here in a couple minutes and hang out with you guys for a little bit, depending on how many people hop in, who's in here tonight. It is a Saturday night after all. My wife is working this weekend, so last night I was just a little bit beat um, and decided to not hop on. So um, I watched a little bit of Bateman's stream last night and just decided to not get on myself, but told myself I'd get on tonight, open this package with you guys. I've got some cool new baits from Sixth Sense, so excited to show you guys and also check them out myself. Nixie, how are you doing tonight? Good to see you in here. There's four people in here. One thumbs up. Do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button early and often. Just kidding. You can only hit it one time, but uh, do me a quick favor and hit that thumbs up button. That'll help push the video out a little bit, um, especially after this video is over. So hopefully people get the notifications tonight so that we can get people in here. And watching so that I don't have to show this multiple times while we're hanging out. Ryan, good man. Uh, thanks. Good to see you in here. How are you doing, man? As always, cheers, guys. Opening a Coors Banquet. This time it is the Series 2 um, Legacy Series Limited Release 2 of 3. This was the can from the 1960s for Coors. Anyway, Ryan, how are you doing, man? Nixie, did you guys go fishing much this past week? I didn't get much of a chance to actually get out on the water and do much fishing. So um, I was very limited in my opportunities. Um, only got out, I think, twice for about an hour at a time each. Uh, caught just a couple fish. But um, did catch a couple of fish on top water on the Whopper Plopper. So that was pretty fun. Nixie, awesome. Kayak fishing, way to go, man. Um, how did it go? Did you catch much? Ryan says, been, been with my blank here for the last couple weeks, which isn't good for fishing. Winds have been 40 to 60 miles an hour every day. Holy crap, Ryan. Windy here the last couple weeks. That is insane. We had a day like that today. Um, we had warnings saying it was going to be, you know, pushing 80 degrees or 80 miles per hour winds tonight. So uh, we had a very windy day. Brought all of our outdoor furniture and, uh, and things like that that could blow away or uh, blow in the neighbor's yard and things like that brought it in this afternoon so uh hopefully it doesn't get too out of hand this evening but sorry to hear that man that's definitely not great for fishing nixie says caught a bunch of rock bass all right man right on dude what do you uh what are you throwing to catch rock bass because i understand that you can catch them on a lot of different stuff but um i'm curious to know were you targeting the rock bass or were you targeting largemouth and catching rock bass uh what was happening with that, Nixie? Dang, Ryan. That is pretty hardcore weather, man. Pretty wild. So, guys, there's only four people in here. Catch them on a swim bait. Interesting. What? Uh, how big of a swim bait, though, Nixie? I, I would have to guess that you're throwing something pretty finessey. Not targeting anything specific in the bay. Okay. Yeah, I, I totally hear you there. So just throwing a small swim bait, uh, trying to catch anything that'll bite. Right on, dude. Um, I feel like... Oh, 
Dang. So, um, Ray texted me, and I'm texting him back right now. Okay. So, um, I did say I was going to stream last night, and I never hopped on, so my bad, guys. Uh, Ryan, I appreciate you asking how my back is doing. It's doing okay right now. Uh, kind of same old, same old, you know, not a lot of progress, to be honest with you. Just trying to stay active, um, make sure that I'm not really getting much weaker or making it any uh, worse than than necessary. But next he says there were pike. Um, I don't know what eel pout. Are those trout? Panfish everywhere. Only the rockfish were biting. Damn, that's pretty crazy, man. Burbot. Okay. Burbot. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Let's get into it and uh, and show you these baits from Six Sense. Let me... I guess I'll just use, like, a hook. Grab this lipless crankbait and, uh, and use it to... Cut open the tape on this box. So... The reason for this purchase was actually because I had, uh, I think Ray told me that one of the new Six Sense baits was just released. Well, not released, but it, it came just back in stock, and um, and I was wanting to buy it, so I decided to jump on it and see, and that bait here is... The Six Sense Catwalk, guys. Burbot. Lawyer fish. Waiting on an order to show up. They had free shipping, so figured out rarity for me. Awesome, man. Whoa. Yikes. All right. Here is the Six Sense Catwalk, guys. This is the uh, bone color. What do they call it? The Spanish bone. So it has a little bit of like an iridescent, uh, kind of like a see-through hue to it. A um, little bit more color changing than like a standard bone. As you can see, it's got more of a pointy belly to it. And a little bit more of a flat top. And that is intentional because this bait is designed to have a little bit of a different action and it actually goes subsurface as you walk it. So instead of staying on the surface, this one actually goes and kind of swims. Um, so it definitely has a different action to it and I am excited to have it and to try it. Just got it in the mail the other day and, um, so Ray told me that it was back in stock because initially I was going to grab one and, uh, and I missed my chance. So thanks to Ray, once again, I made this quick purchase and made sure that I got the catwalk. And while I was at it, believe it or not, they had the Speedwake in stock as well. This is the other brand new bait. By six cents, and um, and it is a wicked top water bait. This guy is a wake bait that is designed to be swum at the fastest of speeds. So it says it was created to wake at the surface at a high, at the highest speed possible without the worry of blowout. Waking this bait over grass, stumps, trees, or simply in clear water can call up the most vicious of strikes. So, Wicked, uh, this color here is called the Black Magic. And as you can see, it's just a single jointed wake bait. It's got a very wide bill. A lot of people are saying that it's similar to the old Strike King Wake Shad. 
and I think there's some similarities between the baits, but um, nice sound there. Of course, I love those those green eyes. So got the speed weight. Whoa! I'm just dropping these baits, disrespecting them. Got the speed wake and the cat walk. Brand new baits from Six Cents, and um, that is why I placed this order. But of course, as always, you know they get you on the shipping, right? If you spend X number of dollars, fifty bucks. You get free shipping. So I ended up making a point to spend 50 bucks, and then I used um, Kevin Baxter, the bait man, use his code for 10% off. I didn't know that you could use uh, Kicking Their Bass TV has a code for 15% off, apparently. So one of you guys told me last stream. So um, anyway, I used bait man's code and only saved 10%. But... Um, <laughs> Ryan, yeah, I texted Ray and told him I was hopping on. So my guess is he'll hop on here in the next 20 minutes or so, and I'll show these baits again. I shouldn't have put them back in the package like I just did. But anyway, here they are once again, guys, Catwalk and Speedway. Super exciting baits there. I want to say uh, the Catwalk is something like 12 bucks, and the Speedway is like 15 bucks, But, um... Could not help myself. They had uh, each of those in a couple different colors. But when it comes to top water, I usually like kind of a uh, a white base or a black base most of the time. Matthias, what's up, dude? How are you doing tonight? So in order to fill out the remaining portion of the order and get from, you know, whatever this was, 25, uh, 28 bucks up to like $55. I grabbed a couple more things. So here's a bait that I haven't tried from Six Sense. This is the flat, uh, the Crush 75X flat. Crush flat 75X. Is that right? And this is a bluegill pattern that they call bluegill fire. And wow, look at this. I mean, that is just a beaut. Bluegill Fire, Crush 75. It's got that pretty subtle rattle like most Six Sense baits have. Of course, it has the heavy-duty EWG hooks like all Six Sense baits have. These look to be, I think, size 4, maybe size 2s. The bait is pretty substantial in size, so it weighs three eighths of an ounce, uh, five eighths of an ounce, and is two point six five inches long. So I'm excited to throw that. I think this bait will work year round, but especially do well in the spring. So uh, I'm going to start throwing this guy right away. I'm going to start throwing these guys right away and all through the summer. But I've been seeing a lot of bedding bluegills up shallow. Um, at the places that I fish as of late. So I will be throwing that bait a bit here. Um, that crush says that it, it runs, uh, what does it say? Yeah, up to five feet deep. I was going to say two to five. That sounds right. Yeah, Ryan, text me a pic when your order shows up for sure, man. You know, I would love it if we could get you guys on the live streams. Like, if uh, if you had an unboxing and, and we could stream together, you know, like I'd Skype you and you hop in and show us your package. That would be super cool, right? Um, all right, I've got a... Six Sense Divine Hybrid Jig. 
I've actually never had a hybrid jig. I've only thrown the um, divine swim bait or swim jigs and swim baits. All this divine stuff is uh, is getting the best of me. But the hybrid jig, I have not thrown. This guy has, as you can see, uh, a different shaped head that is a very versatile shape. Uh, this thing will come through most types of cover, and that 3 8 ounce head is actually pretty dang small. You know, as you can see, it is smaller than my fingernail there. So, very manageable size jig here. I'm going to take the rubber band off the skirt so you can see it. And maybe put a trailer on for you, maybe not. But this color here is called Candy Craw. And as you would expect, it's got some purple in it, some blue. And a whole lot of green pumpkin. So, as you would expect, I'm probably going to put my absolute favorite color and bait on there. And that is the Chameleon Rage Bug. Uh, just an absolute dream pairing here. A uh, little bit of purple flake, but mostly bluegill colors. So I'll be able to, to fish this jig in a whole lot of different situations. Um, and I'll mostly be flipping it, pitching it in and around um, specific pieces of cover. But I can fish this in grass. I can swim this jig. Um, I can really do anything that I need to with it. So with a craw trailer on it. Um, I can also work it however I want to. So this is a jig that I will put a craw trailer on and the divine swim bait or the divine swim jig that has eyes on it, I will throw with a swim bait trailer the vast majority of the time. Uh, just with the way that it's designed, um, I think it's better for swimming and I think this guy's better for hopping, dragging, uh, popping through grass. Also good for swimming too, like I said, but uh, this has like a, a very nice medium wire hook to it. So I like that it's not overly heavy and it's probably a three, maybe a four aught hook. So not so, so crazy. Did I just say, is Ray in here? What up, Ray? Yeah, we've been talking six cents, bro. Um, Ryan, in terms of a swim jig, I am usually pretty subtle with the way that I work it. Um, you're not going to see me constantly shaking the swim jig. You're not going to see me pumping it super hard. Um, I'm usually working a lighter weight swim jigs with swim bait trailers on them. And I'm letting the swim bait do most of the work. And I will um, work the swim jig with the reel more often than with the rod. And that's just me. You know, I'll, I'll work it on a steady retrieve and then kind of pop it with the, the reel every four or five turns. Uh, so I'm really only making the bait dart or do something different uh, a couple times per retrieve. But I find that I get bit at the very beginning of the retrieve. Um, or after the fall when I start swimming the bait, um, or after one of those uh, start and stop portions of the, the retrieve. So what about you, Ryan? Yeah, I agree, Luke. Uh, six cent swim jigs do go through grass great. So um, until now, all that I had from six cents were those divine swim jigs. I'd never really tried the uh, the hybrid jigs, and at five bucks a pop, they are relatively expensive jigs. So, I'm not gonna lie, I don't have a ton of them. I have a a handful of their swim jigs, and that is it. So, um, anyway, wanted to check out this jig, try it in a few different scenarios, and see 
how and where I might like using it best. I will definitely trim up this um, skirt. Most of the time, as a, a general rule of thumb, I will trim the skirt close to the bottom of the shank of the hook. But in this case, because it's a shorter hook, um, this is actually going to shorten up the skirt a little bit too much. It's going to make it very finessey. So I'm probably just going to take off bottom, you know, eight to a quarter of an inch. And um, and that should be perfect with that rage bug. By the way, Ray, um, I sent you a pack of those. So maybe I should whip those out while we're at it. I pretty much always carry a pack on me. Um, I've shown you guys this box before. And it's the kind of Plano box that has... You know, four slots and then one open compartment. And I've showed you how I like to take uh, clamshells of soft plastics and load them into that side. So I can fit three packs of soft plastics inside just half of this 3600 box. And then I can fit a whole bunch of other, you know, baits, be it chatter baits, swim jigs, um, Ned rig baits, Tokyo rigs. I've got a bunch of stuff in here right now. And um, yeah, so. Ray, what's that face about, bro? So I sent Ray a couple things to, uh, to help pay him back for the Axis baits that he sent me. And that movement bait that he sent me. So, um, in it, you know, I put a couple of jackhammers, a couple of rare colors, the uh, the fire craw and the heights hot craw. Ray's got coming his way, and put a couple packs of trailers in with those. And um, in it was a pack of these chameleon rage bugs. This is arguably one of my favorite baits in the last couple of years. Um, I, I absolutely love, love, love this color. Um, it's, it's so versatile. Um, you can rig it either way you want and, um, and you can throw it on almost any color. It's, it's like a hybrid between peanut butter and jelly and watermelon red. And, um, and I love it on a Texas rig, a Tokyo rig on a swim jig on, um, a chatterbait on anything. So I always have kind of a pack or two around. And, um, so I'm working my way through one of these right now. I've got one on the wall and I had an extra. So I definitely thought that, um, that Ray should know about it and have one. Um, so chameleon rage bug, I don't know why I didn't rig that up for you guys. Cause I pulled that out for a reason, not just to show Ray that I got it for him, um, or sent it to him and Ray, I'm not sure how, you, how into the Ned rig you are, but I sent you a pack of Ned rig baits too, man. All right, guys. So I am going to. Just bite off the tip, and then I'm going to thread this bad boy on about a little bit more than halfway down, and um, Ryan, don't talk about my concentration right now. Hope you're not. <laughs> Ray, what are you going to do? Don't mount the jackhammers, you silly. Um, let me see if I've got a pair of scissors on me. I wish I could trim up this skirt right now. But I'm telling you guys, the colors on this jig are just blue, gill, 
all over the place. So I could just drag this thing around. I could hop it, stroke it, swim it, do whatever you want to do. This thing right here, guys. Um, in fact, I'm just going to leave it rigged. I'm going to trim it later. I'm going to tie it on. And, uh, and I'm going to make sure that I fish it sooner than later. Pumped about that one. Um, got a couple packs of soft plastics. This is the Stroker Craw. Showed you guys this bait recently. Guys, we've got nine people in here. Seven thumbs up. Appreciate you guys. This is the dark water bug color, which is a sweet, sweet color. Check this out. It's like a uh, June bug type of base. Um, purple mostly, right? But it is black on one side and like electric blue on the other side. So it's like June bug on one side and then kind of like a black and blue on the other. This is a really cool color. You know, it's going to vary a little bit from bait to bait, just how much um, flake is in there and how much it shows up. But um, really cool color there, the dark water bug. I've got that in the um, in the clout worms, but um, wanted to get a pack of these. I tried this bait in the green pumpkin. Um, already and really really like it here's the thing though guys these uh these kicker claws are kind of like a uh, like a speed craw type of deal and also kind of like a double tail grub and um, it's got a, a pretty aggressive swimming action but as we've talked about before these legs are pretty thick and so you have to swim the bait pretty fast to get um, these legs kicking pretty well, which is fine. But, um, what I've noticed just through fishing the bait, um, over the last, you know, week or two is that over the course of using it, these legs get a lot softer, um, and they swim easier. So, you know, as you see, I've got it rigged sideways right now on this uh, Project Z chatterbait. I rigged it both ways and actually liked it um, just a little bit better like this. But um, anyway, it has softened up. So I think this might be one of those baits that you could certainly boil ahead of time to soften up. Um, you know, people boil their baits for for a couple different reasons, right? The main reason is to to straighten out a bait. If you've got one with a super kinked up tail, for example, you know, um, this isn't a, a great example because I, I try to take care of most of my, my tails, but let's say you pull one out of the package and it's got a super kinked up tail. Um, you can dip it in super warm or bordering on boiling water and um, and then just lay it down and it will flatten out. So let me look at these comments because I see you guys are popping off right now. Russ Dennis in the building. What is up, dude? Russ killed it on the six cents divine shaky worms on a flatland one sixteenth one off weedless Ned last Thursday got eight over two and a half pounds what a day so much fun off the bank dang bro that sounds like a killer day good for you man congratulations sometimes a little uh, shaky head is where it's at man so weedless Ned with a shaky worm huh. 
Were you using the, the shorter or the longer worm, Russ? So, Ray, <laughs> speaking of uh, which ones need to be on the wall, man, did you already see that Spanish bone catwalk, or do I need to pull it back out of the box for you, bro? Yeah, don't worry about it, Ray. I'll get back to you every now and again, bro. Mm -hmm. Isn't it wild how how uh, pointed this belly is, Ray? I love how detailed the head and the scales are. Of course, the color is fantastic, but um, pretty pretty wild how edgy the bottom is there compared to to other walking baits. You know, I'll show you uh, just because I've got it sitting here on my table. Like here's here's that six or the uh, Strike King. Uh, Sexy dog, the hard knock. Look at the bottom. That thing is flat on bottom. Very different. So... So this actually has a knocking sound, um, like that bait for sure, man. So aside from the stroker cross, I got a pack of the Divine Swim Baits, and this is the small size, the 3.2, um, I believe it is, yep, and this is the Gill Dust color. These were on sale like super cheap. I should have gotten a couple packs of these because they were like, I don't know, less than three bucks for the pack. And there are seven in here. So look at how small and dare I say cute these things are. I mean, goodness. I tell you guys all the time that I think the 3.2 inch size of the, you know, the Rage Swimmer or the Kitech is my favorite size. And um, so I'm going to show you how I like to rig it up best. And I'm just going to rig up this Divine Swim Bait the same way I would. Now, what's cool about these swim baits, normally I wouldn't say this is cool, but look, upside down, you can see that the tail does not bend over. Really, um, these are not very soft. Uh, so again, maybe just like those stroker craws, you could boil these a little bit, soften them up. But the point is, you can come a little bit further down the bait with the hook without impeding the action of the tail um, whatsoever. So I'm going to use this 3 aught hook. This is a BMC boxer head, 1 8 ounce. And I'm going to line it up on the side to see that it comes out. Oh, halfway down the hook slot. And uh, I'm going to thread this puppy on. And just like I did with that jig, I'm going to leave it rigged up. And I'm going to freaking take it fishing over the next few days. Um, I'm excited to have this. Whoop a daisy. How did I do that? <laughs> All right, here we go. That is a very mediocre rig job, but 
to you guys, it probably looks pretty good. Um, as you can see, this hook is borderline too big for the swim bait, but I would still throw this because it has a lightweight head and a, uh, a medium wire hook. So, um, works just fine. Other way that I like to rig it is on a Gamakatsu round ball jig head. They make these in the two aught and the three aught size. This is the three aught size. I like the three sixteenth ounce weight uh, most of the time with that jig head. So that would be the other way that I rig it: ball head or on that boxer head. But awesome little swim bait. Um, these are actually surprisingly smaller um, in body than I thought they would be, just given how big the the big one is that I have. I've got the 4.2, and um, yeah, it feels way bigger than this 3.2, obviously, but interesting. So I've got a pack of those, and, um, and we'll move on in one second once I catch up with you guys. Yeah, Russ, I was going to mention the size of that, that Ned hook on a divine um, shaky worm, you know. Alex Rosenlund, good to see you in here. Whopper ploppers, I think they're the deal. Um, I love whopper ploppers, dude. Didn't we talk about whopper ploppers last time? Oh, I reorganized since last time we talked, guys. So I've got some of my ploppers stashed in this uh, top water box that I'm kind of consolidating, but... Yeah, Alex, I love the Whopper Plopper. And, uh, you know, I've got the 110 in the black color tied on right now. The black color is the Loon. Um, that is probably my favorite color, but I also really like this bone. Uh, the 110 is my favorite size. And then the, the 75 is probably my next favorite uh, Ray and I were texting, I think, earlier in the week about the Whopper Plopper. He said it's not quite for him, but that's because he's got them in the 110, which, guys, the 110 weighs right at about an ounce. Um, so, Ray says it feels a little clunky, a um, little bit big to throw, which, you know, is a valid point, but... The Whopper Plopper 130, as you can see, this has still gotten bit quite a quite a lot. Um, weighs about an ounce and a half. And um, sure, it needs to be thrown on a true heavy power rod. But the Whopper Plopper 110 at an ounce can be thrown on a medium heavy or a heavy um, with ease. You know, I throw mine on a heavy, and I feel super confident. I broke off a couple 130s when I bought them um, initially, just throwing them on, like, medium heavies and, um, and backlashing and sending that whopper plopper flying. Uh, they're, they're pretty heavy at an ounce and a half, but the 110 at an ounce I think is very manageable. And it still has a very solid presence, um, a loud plop to it, really good action. So I like that Plopper 110. Um, we talked about this in a, in a past stream before, but that Plopper 90, in my opinion, is not worth having. Um, one or two of you said that you wanted 
that plopper 90 from me. I, in that moment, kind of agreed to send one of you guys um, that one. Um, if it was you, let me know in the comments. I might remember. Um, but here's why I don't like the 90. It's right here where I'm touching. See that space? This gap catches grass very easily. And when it gets tripped up and the prop can't turn, then the whole bait starts to turn and it twists up your line and it, it creates big problems for you. So the 90 is the most finesse. Um, it weighs a half an ounce, has this um, small profile, has a, a very kind of high pitch, subtle plop to it. And it has the lightest uh, treble hooks and terminal on there. The 75 is the newest addition to the lineup. As you can see, I fished the heck out of that last year. I got beat up. Um, its terminal is about the same, if not um, a little bit stronger. The profile, its belly is much deeper than the 90. Um, this guy has a lot more presence and a much louder plop than the 90 does. And look at the joint. You can't see the space in between there. Because just like the 110, it has this more sophisticated shaped tail where the tail actually is shaped to go into the body um, and sit flush in there. So it doesn't pick up grass nearly as easily. And I love that feature about it. So the 90 is a no-go in my book. The 75 though, Ray, you got to get a 75. Whopper plopper in the loon. If you write anything down on this stream, this is the bait that you need to put on your wish list moving forward, dude. I had some killer, killer outings on it last year. And I expect to this year too. So Alex, I hope that answers your question. Um, I just bought some of the Chopos and the Savage Gear, um, what do they call it? The uh, Smash Tail. Just bought some of these to to compare alongside the Whopper Plopper. So the smash tail has a, a narrower body, has um, more realistic fins on it, multiple fins, and then has this like um, metal ball in the tail. And like the Whopper Plopper, it has a, a pliable plastic tail. The Chapo, on the other hand, by Berkeley, has a hard plastic tail that is not bendable whatsoever. In fact, if you were to cast and hit this bait on some rocks, I believe it would crack and break on you. So, Alex, let me know if you have any follow-up questions on the Whopper Plopper or about the uh, related baits. Got a bone-colored wake bait from a local maker. Caught 15 this morning, 4.30 to 7.30 a.m., but I can't watch long because I'm getting up at 2 or 3 a.m. to go night fishing longer at a better spot, says Brandon. Damn, Brandon Finsterwall. Good for you, bro. That is dedication, Holmes. Waking up at the butt crack, not even at the butt crack of dawn, just middle of the night to go fishing. You know, 4.30 to 7.30 a.m. is uh, is my kind of morning session for sure. So good for you, man. Love to hear that you caught 15 this morning using a bone-colored wake bait. Good for you, man. Alex says, went out for an hour, caught, a, caught two three-pound bass. Awesome. 
Alex. Just ordered that Chapo 90, says Ryan. Ray sent me a picture of the 4K crawfish and a comparison of the 6 ounce top water. Um, I will check that right now. Yeah, Russ, the 75 does have uh, good hooks. All of them have good hooks on them. They're all those, uh, you know, extra strong EWG trebles that um, you don't need to switch out. So, you know, honestly, the the split rings and the treble hooks are good. Oh, dang, Ray. 4K craw. Shoo. Here's what. Here's what Ray is looking at right now. Look at that color. Ray has all three of those baits in front of him. He should be running the show right now. Dang. Dude. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, look at Ray's crankbaits, too. Ooh. Very nice. Very nice. <clears throat> Made your wife go, oh, wow. <laughs> Pretty funny. Oh, shoot. I'm losing the... Uh... Alex says, on the Whopper Plopper 90, having the same issue as spinning part. Yeah, Alex. You got to be aware of that. Um, that's why it helps to use a swivel um, at the front. You know, before you tie on the bait. In case it starts spinning, then the bait won't spin the, the line well. So, um, it'll spin at the swivel. You should consider using that. Darren in the building. What's up, dude? Good to see you in here, man. Just placed an order at BPS full of square bills from their sale. Four bucks for the KVD 1.5. Nice, man. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Um, I I took advantage of a few sales like that last year on the uh, on the 1.5 square bells, the 2.5 square bells uh, from Strike King and Lucky Craft, as well as the the Red Eye Shad uh, lipless crankbaits. So I think whenever you can find a good deal like that and you need to stock up, you might as well. Any suggestions on little smaller crates like kicking action for maybe like Texas rigs? Wait, wait, wait. Little smaller crates or baits for light Texas rigs? Was thinking shaky head. Been using the Ultra Vibe Speed Craw, but need more variety. All right, Darren. Um, So smaller baits, with good kicking action for maybe small light Texas rigs. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of bait in that category, man. But let's go over them. Because I've got a lot of them here in person, and I think you should... Check them out. Oh, smaller craws. Okay, craws. Yep, makes sense. Alex, good suggestion uh, or good idea. Going to get some uh, 75s. The colors that I like best um, are the loon, that black color. Honestly, it depends on what time of day you like to fish, though, Alex. Um, I do a lot of, you know, early morning and night fishing, low light conditions, if you're fishing when it's low light or dark, that black color, the loon, is lights out. It's killer. If you fish during the day, there's a lot of different colors you can throw. But I think the bone or that white, uh, they call it powder, are both great colors. Um, and then... If you want to get fancy, of course, you can throw that T1000 
or uh, the the bluegill color, or um, I also really like the monkey butt. So that gives you a, a little bit of variety. I can show you a couple of them. I don't know where the monkey butt is right now, but I don't know why it helps for me to show you the colors because you can see them online. But, you know, that, that bluegill color is pretty cool. Uh, you know, very clear see-through color with that orange belly. But if you're going to get more of a, a straight color, I like the bone and the, the powder if you like more of a straight white. I have a, a powder in the 75 in another tackle box right now um, that I've been taking out with me. So, yeah, anyway, Alex, um, depends on what time of day you like to throw, but I think the action is more what gets um, the fish's attention. And then the silhouette having a solid color, in my opinion, is usually what tends to get more bites. Um, unless you're fishing clear water, then you might want to go something uh, like the monkey butt or uh, that T-1000 or the bluegill and go something a little bit more see-through. So, okay, craw baits. Dude, you've been throwing the Ultra Vibe Speed Craw, right? Uh, Darren, you, you might want to try the Z-Craw. I'll show you the Z-Craw. Um, but here's the thing is I keep the Z craw in my beaver, um, box instead of my craw box. It's got a, a little bit of a different action. So when it comes to craws, I throw the ultra vibe speed craw. I throw the rage craw, um, And I throw the um, Biospawn Vile Craw. That's a really good bait. Not sure if you've thrown it before, but um, it's got pretty aggressive kicking action to it. Really nice shape, and um, I like that bait. Also throw the Guggenbaits Kraken Craw just a little bit, but in general, I would throw the Rage Craw before the Kraken Craw. Um, if you're looking for that wild, flappy action, um, you know, a good in-betweener bait that I always carry with me. You know, I always have a, a mix pack of, like I was showing you guys earlier, how I carry multiple clam shells of soft plastics with me. The three that I have in there right now are the Rage Craw. And I've got it in one, two, three, four colors. So I've got it in Green Pumpkin, Green Pumpkin Pearl, uh, Delta Red, and Black Blue Flake. I've got the Rage Menace Grub in... Watermelon Red, Blue Craw, um, this is the Falcon Lake Craw, and a White Pearl. And then I've got a pack of the, the Rage Bugs, and this is all Chameleon, that color I was showing you guys earlier. And um, so, honestly, if I'm throwing craws, I like a lot of the Rage stuff, but... Um, But Zoom is good too, man. It, you know, it depends. The Z Craw is cool, but it's not small. You know, you were saying you want a small bait. Look at this guy. Um, it's like four to four and a half inches long. And, um, and it's great on a swim jig. You know, you can see that it's got the flanged kickers, right? So it's got great kickers, but... Here's the thing is this body, just like a lot of zoom baits, it doesn't get poured very consistently and the, the baits get 
twisted in the bags. So I'm not sure if you just saw that with this one, but the the kickers get twisted up, the bodies get kinked, and there's no avoiding that. I've got it in the box here to try and avoid that a little bit. That's the problem with Zoom. You know, if you get flukes or things like that, you end up with that problem. So um, I try to put them in the boxes, but then what I've learned over the last year or two is that the softener in Zoom soft plastics, more than any other brand, warps these boxes. So it's a super annoying problem uh, to have, but Zoom is still really consistent. Um, and their baits get bit, dude. So uh, you know, I'm not going to stop throwing a lot of the, the Zoom baits that I've got just because some of the ones you get are going to be messed up and because they're inconsistent and they warp the boxes, blah, blah, blah. They're still worth it, man. I, there's there's still 10 or 15 different Zoom baits that I like to throw and throw frequently. So you're absolutely right. Ray, you pay half for twice as many. So um, a lot of them, you get 15 or 20 in a pack, which is insane. You know, the trick worms and other baits like that. Um, hey, Ryan, thank you, man. Um, I, I don't know that I've got your number, man. Anyway. Brandon says, I think the bone color is doing well at night because the moon is so bright. You can see pretty well right now, for sure. So um, in with the bugs to compare alongside, say, the Z-Craw. And I know you say the Z-Craw Jr. is a good option. Um, I don't disagree with that. I think it would be worth a look. Um, in here, I've, I've also got the Bandito bugs and I've got the Rage bugs. Um, I just showed you the rage bugs. This is, you know, one of my go-to baits for most applications. Yeah, it's a little bit more durable than the Bandito bug, and I, I think it's got just as good of action, if not better. And um, you know, it has the patent that this bait uses, so um, it's the OG anyway. But the rage bug, I think, is is absolutely worth having in the arsenal. I've got creature baits like the man bear pig in here in addition. So this is beavers and creatures, and the other one is craws. So if you're looking for something with a little bit more action, dude, I would, I would strongly consider going with the rage menace or the rage bug. But I'm not going to disagree with uh with the statement that that I saw that was made about the the reaction innovations spicy beaver this guy right here has some serious kickers on it as well and of course is made in some really really cool colors that reaction innovations makes this one's called blank check and um only thing is value right so like Ray pointed out, you're going to get a lot better bang for your buck when it comes to Zoom soft plastics. You're, you know, you're going to get what you pay for when it comes to Reaction Innovations or Rage Tail, um, you know, or Six Cents. Most other soft plastics, you're going to pay about seventy-five cents to a dollar a base, and it just is what it is. If you can find them a little cheaper than that, then it's cool. But otherwise, um, yeah, I'd say the Spicy Beaver and the Rage Craw are extremely similar. You're going to get pretty um, similar durability out of both of those baits. Great action. But if you want something with a little bit more subtle action to it, go with that Rage Menace. Okay.
Well, you guys are loving on that Z-Craw Jr., huh? Holy hot damn. Brush hog for sure. Brush hog, brush hog. Uh, I agree. The smaller size brush hog, the baby brush hog, um, the regular brush hog is huge. Ryan, let me uh, let me just send you a quick text right now, dude. Appreciate you. Might as well while we're at it, dude. Three oh six. Okay. Darren says, if you could pick one Guggen soft plastic, what would it be? Uh, so one of their soft plastics? Yeah, I would probably choose the Bandito Bug, man. But like I said, um, it's extremely similar to the Rage Bug. I just showed you them side by side. And um, the Bandito Bug uses the Rage Bug's patent and has a slightly worse uh, durability to it. Ray, stop it. <laughs> um, so the durability is not quite as good, but the price is about the same. The action is about the same. The main thing that makes them different or different um, are those two appendages on the side, right? And then the scent. The scent is really the main thing. The Rage Craw is not slimy, Ray. The Bandito Bug is slimy. Um, you don't know slimy until you feel Guggen Beans, okay? Uh, that is the thing, is that um, Rage Tail Baits have a coffee scent on them. They are actually not slimy, like Ray is saying, but Guggen Baits have a scent that they call slaunch sauce, something like that. And um, it is oily. It is super slimy, oily. The Rage Tail Baits are not that way, but the Guggen Baits are. Um, and, and most soft plastics, honestly, do come with some type of scent on them. Uh, whether they were shot that way or they were marinated after the fact, um, most come with some scent on them. But the Guggenbaits ones are like, you know, the bag is wet. And they come in clamshells, but even the bag that the baits come in is, is like wet. Um, it's disgusting. So that said, the scent is really strong and it's unique. Man, the Guggen Bates um, scent, I, I think, gets bites. Um, it's pretty decent. So I've tried most of their soft plastics by now. Um, and like I said, durability is an issue. So I think the Bandito Bug is the most versatile in terms of what you can do with it. Um, you can throw it on a Texas rig, Tokyo rig. You can flip it. You can put it on a jig or a chatterbait or a swim jig. Um, or fish it however you want to. The Kraken Craw is going to be just a little bit less versatile and more of a Texas rig uh, type of bait, and it's going to be a, a summertime bait more specifically just because it has such a, uh, a more wild action to it versus the, the Bandito Bug having that consistent kicking. Russ Dennis, I haven't caught shit off the lunker log. I haven't thrown the lunker log. I've told you guys before, I'm not huge on stick baits. Um, I don't throw Senkos very frequently. Um, I just, I feel like there's so many better things to do. So many more fun ways to fish, even if you're not catching fish, than to be throwing um, a Senko. So I haven't picked up the lunker logs. I also haven't picked up the saucy swimmers just because um i've told you guys before but i went on that rampage uh, a year or two ago in buying so many different soft plastic swim baits just to try them out um 
you know, for the sake of comparing one versus another, knockoffs versus the real deal, find where kind of the value is. But ultimately, I narrowed down to like five or ten soft plastic swim baits that I throw. As you can see, from Beast Coast and Jackal to Optimum and Mega Bass, Kai Tech and um, and Strike King. So and Z Man too. Check out this guy with, I've got a 5.8 inch Jackal Rhythm Wave with a double frog hook rigged on it. Yeah, Ray, you're probably right. Um, it gets bit because it's a Rage Bait copy. <coughs> Brandon says, to me, one of the only stick baits close to a Senko is the Lunker Log. Um, I disagree with that, Brandon. Uh, you know, one time we can talk about stick baits as like an entire topic, and we can show underwater footage, but th there are a surprising number of stick baits on the market these days that have really good action to them. So, uh, until just a few years ago, it was like the Bass Pro Sticko, uh, which, you know, I show you guys all the time. I throw it in the six inch. Um, it comes in like packs of 15 to a pack. So you pay six bucks, you get two or three times as many baits as what you get for Senkos. And, um, and it is the freaking deal. They fall a, almost just as fast and they've got just a little bit less salt in them. They're more durable than a Senko is, but um, the value of the Bass Pro Sticko is tough to beat. Now, since then, newer baits like the Six Cents Clout 5.4 is a very thin worm, but has a ton of wag to it. The Missile Baits 48 is one that I know has a ton of really good action to it. Uh, there's a lot of really good uh, stick baits these days. So uh, the Lunker Log is definitely not the the only one close to a Senko. Uh, sorry to disagree with you on that one, Brandon. You know, Frankie, um, here's the answer. Some people hate Guggen baits because they... Uh, they don't like how the Guggens came onto the scene and um, and how they've, they've taken such a large share of the market. And I mean that in a couple of different ways. Now, uh, one, they came onto the scene super fast. So in a matter of a couple of years, these guys came out of nowhere and then all of a sudden were like, you know, celebrities as big or bigger than like the pros themselves who were, you know, competing at the Bassmaster Classic and who were putting on seminars uh, at the ICAST show. And so I think that rubbed people the wrong way that these kids who, you know, have loved fishing and been making fishing videos for years, but um, are not professionals by any means were just um, plopping themselves into the market and selling gear and making baits all of a sudden. So people don't like that. Um, but the other thing is uh, – shoot, I forget what I was just saying. But the other part is like, um, how they came on to the scene. Um, you know, and, and the fact that they took up such a large portion of the market share. A lot of these companies that have a really good reputation have been in business for decades. And, um, and they're all about innovation and quality and, um, and relationships in the industry and doing right by 
uh, those people they had relationships with. So uh, for, for people like the Guggins to come into the industry and pretty much make a whole bunch of a line of baits that are all just copying um, existing baits that are pretty good designs, but barely making them their own and, um, and immediately selling everything extremely well and then making everything from gear to uh, tackle storage to baits to line to now rods coming up. Literally, um, they call it the Guggen takeover. And um, to most people in the industry, that's a turnoff because uh, most companies tend to specialize, at least traditionally speaking. Until more recently, companies tended to specialize in doing one thing. You either made baits or you made rods or you made reels or you made terminal tackle or, you know, what you did kind of one thing. And it was rare for one company to work their way into multiple areas of the industry. And now more recently, it seems like every company is outsourcing and selling their own line. And, um, you know, it, it's bleeding into, you know, hooks and terminal tackle. And, you know, everyone makes their own tungsten now. Of course, they don't make it. They sell it. So um, it's gotten a little bit messy when it comes to that side of the industry. But the Guggins have used their social media influence uh, to sell products at an extraordinary rate. And that turns people off because... The Guggins have not been very innovative or focused on quality so much as uh, just trying to take advantage of an opportunity, right? Uh, they came onto the market super quick. Uh, they know a thing or two about the industry. I mean, they're avid fishermen themselves. They know uh, which brands are doing well for good reason and which ones are not uh, they pay attention to those little things and um and they're trying to to copy the ones that are doing good things and stay away from the ones that are not things like that so uh, for the most part they're trying to partner up with brands like rage tail and bass mafia um a bunch of others and they're they're trying to sponsor pros like jacob wheeler um scott martin of course who is a an investor of the company, but you know, Guggen Bates has has made big moves in a short period of time. So that is the reason why, man. Brandon Finsterwald, why the hell do or would bass like coffee flavor? Where does that come from? No idea, man. Um, but they like it, and I like it. I don't mind having it on my fingers, and the bass eat it. So you know, I've got this rage toad rigged up on this buzz bait and uh sometimes i just like taking a whiff dude russ dennis have to try the frog hook on the swim bait yeah man pretty cool idea right check that out i've got it buried into the sides of the bait so it does mess up the integrity of the bait when i do this but check this out bang pretty easy to set the hook right into the side of my finger um, and break through that soft plastic. And I had it buried in there good. So um, absolutely love that. You do need a wider swim bait like this. It's the Jackal Rhythm Wave. Um, and as you can see, that is just a perfect fit. This is the Stanley Ribbit, um, the Top Take Frog hook um, i think it's in the six aught size but uh yeah pretty cool way to rig a swim bait might as well put two hooks in it right that's got to have that morning coffee too guys Ray says, I agree with Tyler. It's a shame they're made in China, though, but 
Such is the case uh, way too much in America. Yeah, um, you know, but same is true of Six Sense, right, dude? All, all the Six Sense stuff is made in China, so. Uh, appreciate it, Russ. Yeah. Um, you know, some people are going to hate on Guggen's, but, and it's for good reason, but that doesn't mean that uh, it's warranted or that you should either. It's mostly just that they've had such good success so quickly and that it's not like they're proven or that they're experts in the industry. They didn't have to work their way up. They just kind of, you know, uh, took advantage of an opportunity. So. Yeah, Darren, it does damage the bait, but um, but in a different place, right? So it, it's going to damage it right here in the side where I've got it buried. Every time I do that and then set the hook, it's going to rip a little bit of the bait there. So I'm not going to be able to keep burying it. And eventually, I'm going to either have to use a new bait or I'll just switch to a beast hook, something that's a little bit more standard with a single hook. or I will chop it down and I will put on, you know, I'll thread on a swim bait uh, jig head on there. So, guys, I've talked to you about this swim bait before, but this swim bait is a sleeper. I don't know why nobody talks about it, but the plastic is high quality. The design is wicked cool, edgy. The colors are poured extremely consistently. This is the Jackal Rhythm Wave. All of their plastic baits are worth a look. Some of them are expensive, but they're swim baits. That Rhythm Wave is sweet. So, to those of you who follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this the other day. Found this at the lake the other day when I was fishing. I got skunked. Didn't catch any fish, but... Did find this on the bank. This is the Storm Arashi square bill. And um, this is the three foot diver. I don't have any of these in my arsenal, but it's a pretty nice, like, you know, $9 square bill, something like that. It's got a circuit board lip. It's silent, as I just showed you. It's got pretty good hardware on it that comes stock, and it's got a fat body. And, um, and what's really interesting about this, like some of the Arashi baits, is the line tie. Uh, let me see if I can show you guys this. Let me see if I can do it without moving my hand. Do you guys see that? This line tie connects to the bottom of the bait through the bill, and it actually um, goes up and down just a little bit, which is really cool. It's like a self-tuning type of line tie. really like that. So anyway, excited to try this square bill, silent, bright square bill. Russ Dennis. Have a great rest of your night, man. Uh, thank you for hanging out. Appreciate you. Uh, good luck on the water again tomorrow. Keep at it. Yeah, I haven't checked out those new boats that uh, Rackley and Rob got, but I'll probably check that out at some point soon enough, Ryan. Um, I just I haven't yet. I don't know uh, what sort of sponsorship deal they've got going on with their boats so anyway i'm not entirely done with this package by the way guys i showed you the swim baits i showed you the cross there's a there's one more thing in here that i ordered from six cents and that is a pack of jig heads and a couple packs of skirts so Phoenix boats, okay, for sure. So let me 
tell you kind of what my general idea is here. Um, Sixth Sense is known for having really good skirts. And so um, they're pretty affordable too. You, you get five for like less than four bucks. And um, so I, ju I just got a couple packs to start out. This is the Chartreuse Blue or Blue Truce Flash. And this is the Blue Craw. So my thought was I'm going to put these skirts on two different jig heads that I've got. And I'll go ahead and do this while we're hanging out right now since the chat is kind of moving um, at a, a medium or medium slow pace. And, um, and we're not going to hang out here too, too much longer. But I want to show you guys this just since I got to do this at some point anyway. But these Six Sense Divine um, – I don't know what these are called, but the the divine swim bait heads, but they're jig heads. Um, unlike the standard swim bait heads, these have a little um, keeper for a skirt before the screw keeper. So um, this is like the only one that you can buy. I don't know that you can buy these painted, and but this is unpainted. This is the half ounce size. It's got a five aught hook in it. So my thought was I'm going to use this head and this skirt, and I'm going to rig this swim bait on there. I'll show you guys right now. Isn't like 99% of their audience think fishers though? Maybe. Um, I don't know about that because they've been doing uh, boat fishing content for for a long time now, man. All right, so these skirts are pretty nice. So I'm going to go ahead and thread in the longer side. You know, the skirts are going to be pretty much through the middle, but there's always going to be one side that's a little bit longer than the other. So I'm just going to go in the longer side. Wow, that's pretty tight. That is a tight fit. I'm supposed to get that on there. Oh, boy. Guys, I've never done this before. You're catching me off guard here. And this is sketch. Yeah, right. I mean, I feel like it's going to be magic. Dude. Um, I don't want to screw it on. I feel like I have to screw it on like a, like a trailer um, to get it up on there. And I'm going to ruin this guy, but, you know. This is what I bought them for, man. Like, <laughs> I'm twisting it all up. Oh, this is going to get all messed up. Oh no! I tried to commit, guys, and I got stuck. Ryan says he's stuck between Hummingbird and Garmin. 
I'm stuck between the keeper and the keeper. No! So I can't figure out how to get this up on there right now. And that is a... Uh, that is tricky. So that's sad. I need to shred this to get it off. But basically what I'm going to do, <laughs> once I get this off, which I don't know how I'm going to, I'm going to take another one of these skirts and I'm going to take the rubber band and cut it off. And... I will put the skirt up on here and I will hand tie it on there and I will make a wicked ass swim jig out of this guy that will look banging and as the trailer I'm gonna put this sweet little sexy shad they call it classic sexy shad and it is a very light color um, Miyagi Swimmer. Look at that color. That is just waiting to go on that blue truce. So, pretty cool deal. Um, went kind of out of my way to make that combo. But, I paid just barely more. Um, I paid like, I don't know, eight bucks for these two. And then another three for this pack. I'm going to put these on some football jig heads that I have that are naked. Showed you guys those jig heads before. Made by Picasso. Crazy that they're not in that box. So that's the jig head that I'm going to put the, the skirt up on. Picasso 3 or 4 aught. Guys, I've, all of a sudden I, I got to pee pretty bad. So I'm going to have to dip out of here. I know that you guys are, are talking about um, trolling motors and stuff. Why don't you guys just chat for a minute and I'll come right back. Rig that up for you.
shove that business up on there. Gonna do a little bit of fiddling with it, but just change that naked head into quite a nice looking football jig. If you ask me, blue craw. You know what, Ryan? <laughs> Guess what I'm throwing as the trailer on this puppy? Oh, man. I, I threw out my arm, dude. Magnum. Actually, no. Nay. I will not throw that. That that hook is too small. Instead, yo, I'm going to go with the Blue Craw Rage Menace. And that is going to be a pairing right there. I wish I had my scissors down here. I really need to trim these jigs up. I've got a pair of scissors. Ooh, baby. Here comes some more. A little bit more concentration for you, dude. Boom, bada bing. Need to trim that business up. Like I said, usually I like to trim my skirts close to the bottom of the hook. So like with this guy, pretty much gonna cut like a, a quarter to a half an inch off of most of the, the skirt. I want this short, but not too short, you know? I just don't like it long. There's gonna be a couple little longer strands in here, but for the most part, now this guy is flaring out nicely. I might consider trimming down that trailer just a little bit, but for the most part, that is right where I want it to be. So I'm going to go looking for some rocks to throw this around. Um, and voila to the law. Happy about that. So no way Ron Holly from Idaho just jumped in here. So anyway, I mostly got these to, uh, to, to try out the skirts, see what they're like, what the material is like, because I figured the colors were great, but um, wanted to play around with changing out skirts on different baits. You know, I've got some chatter baits and swim jigs that have lost their skirts over time. I had some uh, jig heads like this one that came naked. And I bought, you know, these, these swim jig heads from Six Sense that I could, I thought I might be able to put the skirts on. And I am going to have to hand tie them on there, which is fine with me.
but um, cool to try out jigs and customize um, your skirts and play around a little bit. So fun little package from Six Cents. Got some jig heads, some skirts, a couple packs of soft plastics, and most importantly, the brand new topwater baits. New on the market from Six Cents, so really excited about those, and um, we'll be putting them to work soon here. Quite honestly, um, as I told you earlier on the stream, I caught my first uh, topwater. Whopper plopper fish um, earlier this week caught a couple of them on the loon colored 110 and um, Alan says I like how trimming the skirt to show the tail of the trailer. Yeah, man, that's pretty much um, What I'm doing is I'm You know the the reason that you have the skirt on there is to have it flare and give the bait secondary action once it gets to be um, too long, then it gets in the way of the action of the trailer itself. And then it doesn't make sense to have a soft plastic trailer on there in the first place. So if you want it to kick, you want to make sure that the, the skirt is not coming down to the, the tail of the trailer itself. Whether you're using a swim bait or a craw or whatever, it doesn't matter. So yeah, that is pretty much the point, Alan, is trimming the skirt so that it, it's not over the tail of the trailer. But I also like, as a general rule of thumb, like, like I said, to pretty much trim it up to the bottom of the hook. But in a lot of cases, that makes it very finesse cut and gives uh, a very small profile. So like in this case, I think that's plenty finesse and... Um, and I didn't go quite as low as the hook. But like I said, that's because this has a little bit smaller and lighter wire of a hook on it than a lot of jigs do. Heck yeah, I'm dropping skirts now, Ray. <laughs> Ray says, Tyler, what about my jig slash Z craw color combo I messaged you about? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know that I saw that, man. Oh, d didn't you send me a, a picture? Like I said, I didn't, um, I hadn't gotten that text. When I texted you earlier tonight, I said, sorry, didn't see this. Uh, whoa, dude. That looks pretty crazy. Look at Ray's combo that he's going with. That's like a, a peanut butter and jelly jig with a bright orange craw trailer. So see how mine matches perfectly? Blue craw on blue craw. Supernatural. Ray's, on the other hand, is not. But actually pretty, pretty interesting. I like that, man. And Alan, yes, I have. Um, I tend to do that pretty frequently. I was showing you guys earlier um, how I've got the this chatterbait rigged with the six inch stroker craw, and I've got that rigged sideways right now. So yeah, I do that pretty frequently. You know, especially when it comes to the menace grub. Um, I really like rigging this bait sideways, but only on chatter baits or on swim jigs for the most part. If I'm throwing it on a swim or on a football jig like this, or if I was throwing it on, um, you know, more of like a, a flipping style jig, like if I had put like this guy, the one that I got earlier tonight, um, then I'm going to want to rig it like a craw and not 
sideways. So speaking of, while we're at it, now that I have the scissors, I am going to trim up this skirt as well. This is the hybrid jig, uh, six cents hybrid, divine hybrid jig. And, um, and I'm just going to take off the same amount kind of across the board. And I'm going to trim off maybe um, maybe about that much. Not quite that much. I'm going to about half of what I'm holding right now. And um, so I'm taking off maybe an eighth, a little less than a quarter of an inch. And um, that will significantly shorten up um, the skirt as a whole, but still leave a fair amount of length on there. So that is what we are left with now. In my opinion, that is just about the right length. And you see, I, I didn't cut it straight across. It's, it's a little bit longer in the middle, kind of tapers down uneven skirt when i'm trimming i'm not going straight across i'm kind of cutting at an angle snip 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 uh, so that it's uneven it's going to pulse a little bit better in the water so this guy here this combo is one that i'm psyched about and um yeah got some some really cool stuff in this package that i'm i'm pumped about guys so Appreciate you guys watching um, and hanging out tonight. There's nine people in here right now. Ten thumbs up. Really appreciate that. If you guys haven't already hit the thumbs up, do me that favor and do it real quick. Um, this Six Cents package that I got in the mail this week was a pretty exciting one. Um, and I'm happy to have these baits. I don't know when the next time is that I'm gonna I'm gonna stream. My wife works. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this upcoming week. So I'm going to be on um, at least once, if not twice, uh, maybe three times if you guys are crazy lucky um, this upcoming week. So I'll, I'll probably be on Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. I apologize for not hopping on last night. But um, as I said, I was just kind of wiped out. And, of course, Brian Waterman. OG, in the building, I've been on for an hour and 43 minutes, and I am signing off right now, dude. Sorry to say that, man. Um, Alan says, besides the skirt, have you trimmed the weed guards? Yes. So um, I actually didn't trim this Picasso. It comes pre-trimmed and too trimmed, too short, in my opinion. Look at that. It barely covers the tip of the hook now the six cents one on the other hand is just perfect if not a little bit too long as a general rule of thumb you want the weed guard when you collapse it to be pretty much as long as the keeper the barb on i shouldn't say keeper but the barb on your hook so not the tip but the barb and so this one is just about perfect i wouldn't ordinarily trim that um this one on the hybrid jig though take a look at that and this guy is too long can you see that so i am going to trim that down as well and six cents doesn't trim their their weed guards at an angle but i often will so i'm gonna double check again to see how much I have to trim off and it's not a ton so all I'm going to do is trim off that you know essentially it's this much but I'm going to trim it at an angle like some jigs come straight out the pack And, um, yeah, sorry for the concentration, Ryan.
but there's what my trimmed weed guard is going to look like on the hybrid jig. When you see I collapse it, it comes right to the barb on the hook. And I trimmed it at an angle so that it is flat like so. So there is my trimmed skirt, trimmed weed guard. Ready to rock, ready to tie on. Hybrid jig. Love it. <clears throat> the UFC fights got you, Brian. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know that this show is, is worth re-watching, man, but appreciate you hopping on. Um, I will re-watch the UFC fights, but thought I, I uh, you know, owed you guys one to be on here. So I apologize for, for not being on last night, as I mentioned, and, uh, and I hope to be on twice, if not maybe even three times this upcoming week. So... Topic idea for this week, shad color trailers like for chatterbaits. Sure, man. Um, I'd be happy to talk about shad color trailers for chatterbaits. Um, why not? Trailer colors for those odd color chatterbaits. What do you mean, Ryan, when you say odd color chatterbaits? Yeah, I like this. I like this swim bait better on the ball head. So, put that divine swim bait in the three point two on the two watt size hook of the Gamakatsu round ball finesse jig head, and um, I think that's that's the way to rig this guy. It's the way I will be fishing it at least initially. Look at that. Really skinny, small bait. Smaller than I thought it would be, but I like that, I think. No problem, Alan. Ryan, colors that aren't the norm, or just like with that green pumpkin, something that's a little bit different. Sure. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I've got a, I've got a few different ones. I can uh, I'll pull out some pairings ahead of time. I'll pull out different trailers, so we could talk more about chatterbait trailers and uh, and about colors as well. So sounds good to me. Races shad colored trailers specifically, so um, who knows? You guys tell me if you'd rather it be um, a trailers color situation or if you'd rather it be chatterbait trailers specifically. This beer is totally warm by now, guys. We're, we're two hours in. Um, I've already left to go pee once and I need to hop out of here. I really do need to organize some of these baits that I've got in here. Did we talk about the Cavatron buzz bait last time, guys? This guy is still not tied on, but needs to be. Did you guys see my Instagram post earlier this week comparing all four sizes of the Rage Swimmer. I shouldn't say all four because there's five sizes, but I'm going to hold these side by side for you to see uh, just how drastic the differences are. 
or the difference is between sizes. Um, so look, here's the, the 2.8. Here's the 3.8. Here's the 4.8. And here's the 5.8. And, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty drastic, you know, going from the, the five, eight to the four, eight. It's pretty drastic going from the four, eight to the three, eight. And then again, from the three eight to the two, eight. And, uh, and that's ultimately why I like that 3.3 inch size. Um, I think it's a really great middle size in between the the three eight which makes such a great swim jig trailer uh, it can be a good chatterbait trailer but really good standalone finesse swim bait but it's a little bit on the larger size and the 2.8 inch is just micro you know it this is like a crappie bait it works for largemouth and smallmouth but the 2.8 inch is is so small that 3.3 three size um, is a true middle ground. It's it's so comfortable. Uh, the fish gobble it. I've I've got it rigged uh, a few times over there, and I'll show you guys next time I stream in a couple days. But anyway, guys. Uh, Ryan's comment above what? Some trailer colors for those odd chat, odd colored chatter baits. Sorry, Ray, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Uh, we will talk about chatterbait trailers, specifically shad colored chatterbait trailers in the next live stream, guys. So I um, hope you guys have a great rest of your night. It is 11 p.m. my time. We've been on for two hours tonight. Um, it has been a smaller crowd than normal, especially when it comes to our regular crew, but Ryan, Ray, Brian, um, Alan, appreciate you guys hanging out um, and participating in the chat. Ron, Holly, you as well. So um, thank you guys for hitting the thumbs up button. Thank you for hanging out tonight. If you're getting on the water tomorrow uh, or before next time we hang out, I wish you the best of luck. Feel free to reach out at any time with questions you might have whether it be commenting on um, individual YouTube videos or sending me an email, feel free to, uh, to get in touch with me, however. And Ryan, you've now got my cell phone. Um, right on, guys. Have a great rest of your night. See you in the next one. Cheers.